la 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 pa 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 <laughs> sorry what <laughs> I don't know what to do when you do that because it sounds so professional. I know. Um, <laughs> right. So, is this in the right place for you? It's in a lovely place for me. Okay, lovely. Is that um, did that wobble? Mm, or is it all right? It's fine. okay, fine. Um, I just want to say I'm a little bit country. I'm a little teapot. So, are we going to say first of all the thing about uh, people subscribing so we can get more lovely people to subscribe? I think that's a very good idea. Why don't you do it this time? To camera, asking nicely. So everyone, we are here again for our lovely podcast and we'd love you to go over to our YouTube channel and subscribe to it because then you'll see all our lovely flowery filmettes, won't, won't they, Lucy? That you will see them, it's true. So, do Subscribe. It. Yeah. Right, away we go then, Paulie. I'm um, just going to get myself ready on our little bullet point notes so we can string something together. Yeah, have a good podcast. <laughs> You are all so, so welcome to this, our 22nd episode of Fabulous Flowers TV podcast, coming at you from the wilds of deepest Sussex, from this rather fine home studio that also doubles up as my kitchen, which is handy for snacks and drinks. And here beside me, I'm delighted to say, is my wonderful and florally talented friend, Paulie Hawkins. Hello, Paulie. Hi, Lucy. It's lovely to be here, and thank you for a lovely lunch. We've had some delicious halloumi kebabs, and oh my goodness, who knew halloumi could be so delicious? Well, it needs lovely. a bit of something to pep it up and make it yeah. interesting. Yeah. It was very interesting. Good. Just needed a glass of rosé, but we won't go into that. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, it's lovely to be here, and I can't believe how quickly the week's gone. I know, it really has just flown by. It yeah. literally feels like yesterday you were sitting in my kitchen, albeit in a different church. And it's all getting lovely and misty, yes, exactly, all misty and mellow outside. I'm, I hope all you viewers and listeners are enjoying this lovely misty mellowness at the moment. Mm, yes, it is rather lovely. Mm. And you've been busy, actually, haven't you, Paulie, with your regular Monday contracts in London, yes. with your gorgeous team of girls, my lovely lo Hannah. Girls. And lovely and Hannah, lovely Kelly, yeah, and lovely Emma, who keeps us all... Um, in touch on the road so, uh, and yeah. in floral loveliness and what was on your menu of delights for your clients this week well we had a, a plethora i'll say that um of beautiful english hydrangeas mm. lovely late summer english roses mm. and some lots of lovely delicious foliages um and um, short or yeah. long tall how, how would tall, you do lots of scented geranium which i Ooh, could use forever. yes um yeah. it all went very well thank you and, good um, yes it happens every Monday, just, you know, same thing, different look. Yes, and what time do you get up? You get up sort of super early, Shirley? I would say at about 3.30, yes. Golly me. Yes, yes don't, don't well. come near me on a Monday. No, um, <laughs> yes, those girls obviously have the patience of a saint, but, you know, I'm prepared to put up with you, as I'm sure they are, they for your floral very, genius. Yeah, they can be very mean to me, though. No, can no, they? No. <laughs> I don't believe it. Not that lovely Hannah. Lovely Hannah. Um, well, let's get down to business, Paulie, shall we? Uh, mm. Let's share our local. Blah, 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 blah. Let's rewind and share our floral focus for the week. And in fact, something that I don't think I actually even knew the name of. Uh, so when you described them, I thought, crikey, you better do a bit of a Google. Um, and I would like to think that therefore they were less well known. Mm, they are. They are a sort of. They're definitely a West, well, 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 I've got the... Oh dear, I've they passed know. it to you. <laughs> they are kind of a, a, a less well-known bloom. Mm -hmm. um, certainly from a domestic point of view, um, they're just amazing. Mm. Uh, they are the Eremurus. Mm. I'm going to repeat that again, everyone. The Eremurus. Lovely. Sometimes called or described as the firework flower. And um, you know we love things seasonal here at Fabulous mm. Flowers, Lucy. Mm. And um, we couldn't have picked a more spectacular and wishier seasonal autumn. Is that flower. your firework noise? Wish, wish. wish. Then you need to go, ooh. Yeah. Bang. I can't do the poppity noises. No, that's, let's not do well, that that's later. Story. Yeah. Um, and they're majestic and they're sort of quite frankly vertiginous. Yes, what does that mean? Yeah. Sort of vertigo ish. Vertical, you know, upright, upright, sticking up. erect. Lovely. Yes. Oh, there you go stop again, that. Paulie. We'll stop that right now. The Eremura is absolutely lovely and just wonderful at this time of year. They predominantly come in white and shades of yellow and sort of hot orange, salmon pink. And um, these towering sensations create a real wow when entering a party. Mm. Um, I think what I might do is pop some examples of them up on our Fabulous Flowers TV Instagram. 
Um, and I think you'll agree, Lucy, there's nothing else quite like them. They're, mm. they're like a big fizzing sherbet spire. So wow. um, you've never seen them before? Well, I hadn't until I then did a bit of research. And mm. when I saw them, I did recognize them, mm. but I would have had no idea what they were called. And they are rather amazing. They are, they are. And they're another great long laster. And um, I often use them for the the lovely weekly contracts in town, but um, my gorgeous flower girls always say, oh no, not Eremurus. Um, Why? Well, the week after when you come to clear them, uh, before putting in the week after's fresh flowers, yeah. you touch them and they just like shatter a million florets everywhere. Wow. So, um, but as I say, you know, that's... Dustpan what, and brush for everyone for Christmas that's then. What, <laughs> exactly. That's what dustpan and brushes are invented for. But yes. When you are in a kind of a 45 million pound house in Mayfair... That yours? Yeah, oh yes, one of them. Yeah. Um, you know, a client's house. You've yes, just got to be everywhere. quite careful yes. where you're sort of depositing your... Florets. Your florets, mm. yeah. But um, I've often used them. And, I, and one thing that sticks to mind, um, yeah. I've, I've done lots of parties with the legendary party planner, Mr. William Bartholomew. Mm. Um, and he does luxurious and lavish parties all over the world. And I've been very lucky to do quite a few of them for yes. a number of royals and celebrities. Wonderful, wonderful. NDAs galore, Lucy, so you don't ask me anything. No, a couple of glasses of rosé and I'll get it all Absolutely out. Absolutely yeah. not. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he was doing a massive party for the Leavers at Magdalen College. I need to call it Magdalen, but I won't. No. No, no, no. Um, Magdalen College. And I did this massive floor standing arrangement in a huge sort of plinth and urn, vast, so you could dance all the way around it. And it was huge. Uh, it was kind of an, ex- an explosion of Eremurus, Agapanthus, hydrangeas, and alliums. So, so lots of long, mm, um, impressive blooms. Yeah. Gosh, how, it must have been so huge, so tall. It was. How did you massive. get up there to do that? Oh well, ladder. Yeah, and so I'm holding the ladder. Health <gasps> crikey. and safety. Yeah. Oh, gosh, and literally, when you go into somewhere, you have to sign all these sort of health and safety. If I slip risk, over, it's not my fault. It's your fault. It's assessment. your fault. It's my fault. Yes, yeah, fair what enough. What happen? Can I cut my finger off? Yes, I have to do those when we're filming. You know, <sighs> what happens if someone trips over a cable? What happens if Will Young falls over and breaks his nose? That yeah, sort of thing. I'd Loads help. of that. Fair enough. I'd help William. Mm, yeah, fair enough. Um, but on to another William, William yeah. Bartholomew, not yeah. that William Young, your friend. Um, he, <laughs> this um, this amazing floor standing sets... I think I still want to talk about Will Young now. But anyway, we'll do that another time. Um, mm. So this stood in the middle of the party. Wow. And it literally took the revellers' breath away as they I walked bet. in. I uh, you know, It just heralded the start of the merrymaking and... It was a jaw-dropping decoration. I'll, I'll put the picture up. But, yes, um, please. But it was so funny. The next day when, when I came to clear, yeah. there wasn't kind of much left of it because um, I think all the revellers decided to sort of pull it apart and dance around with them. And I think they sort of became accessories and props on the dance oh, floor. Oh, okay. Fair yeah, enough. Dancing around with an Aaron Muris. Who doesn't want to do that? Yeah, great fun. And that is the lovely thing about being a florist. There's a there's a lot of joy involved. Yes. Um Despite the, you know, the grueling hours. A lot of memories. I suppose you're creating a lot of wonderful memories that people will have forever. Absolutely. With your lovely you're flowers. You're delivering joy. And yeah. You know, it's not like you're kind of the tax inspector or anything like that. Yeah. Anyway, but um, Eremurus, I mean, I can't recommend them high, highly, high, more highly. Mm-hmm. Um, order some from your local flower yes. shop. Yes. Uh, they're a funky, fantastic party piece. And, um, and actually, they're a good reason for dusting off that big old vase in the back of your cupboard. And um, making it sing a bit. Yes, absolutely. You're loving that. Well, I found out that the Eremurus, the name comes from the Greek, which is Eremos for solitary, and Aura or Aura for tail. So it's a solitary tail. Oh. And I suppose if you think about it, that's kind of a bit what it's like. Exactly. And um, they're from a genus of deciduous perennial flowers. And they're also known as foxtail lilies or desert candles which I thought was quite nice too. They must obviously Mm. with their colours. They're native to Eastern Europe, particularly Russia through to Ukraine, and also the temperate Asia. So from Turkey to Siberia and on to China. The inflorescence or flowers look similar to a long spike or a bottle brush. And they do indeed, as you say, Paulie, resemble a firework. And also I'm loving the uh, whooshier phrase you had earlier to describe them like that. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Whoosh, whoosh, bang. Um... (laughs) These large impressive blooms consist of many individual flowers or florets that can be copper, bright yellow, snow white, pastel pink, orange or any combination of those colours. Their leaves grow in tufts of thin green strap-like strips. You've got your teeth in for that, Lisa. (sighs) Um, They're renowned for being tall and some flowery spikes rise up to 10 feet over the leafy green foliage of their stalks below. 
depending on the variety. Wow. So no wonder you used them for that incredible feat of um, floral extravaganza at Magdalen College, Oxford, Paulie. Absolutely. And do you think you'd pop some in your garden, Lucy? Are you tempted to have some in the back of your well, border? Well, actually, yes, because they'd be lovely, wouldn't they? To mm. sort of, as you say, at the back of the border to create some height, interest and also texture with their kind of bottle brush look. I love that idea. Yeah, and I think that they'd be quite nice, a sort of late summer, a bit of late summer charm in your yes, garden. Yes, yes. But um, I'm going to give you a few little gardening tips. Wonderful. Um, and um, as you know, that the, the Aramuras originate from the dry grasslands and yeah. semi-deserts of Western and Central Asia. A lot of flowers come from Asia, don't mm. they? It's gorgeous. Um, and it can be difficult to mimic such growing conditions in the UK climate because um, they need a lovely free-draining mm. kind of gritty soil. Mm. Think so their feet don't get wet? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, mushy feet, we don't like that. So choose the sunniest spot in the garden and um, don't plant in a frost pocket. No. So it's, I don't know where a frost pocket is in my garden, but... Um, well, a little bit that doesn't get as much sunshine, I suppose. A little bit sort of shady, dingly dell yeah. in the corner somewhere. <laughs> but they're, they're hardy. The young spring foliage is prone to a bit of frost damage, so um, avoid windy sites. <laughs> oh, dear. <Yeah>. <coughs> if you're growing... <laughs> If you're growing so that, that was Lucy, um, oh. if growing taller species, and of, of, you're only going to know who that was if you watch it on YouTube. <laughs> Definitely, Lucy. Um, so you can purchase Eremurus as a bare root crown um, from any good garden centre or nursery or online, but, um, but they're available in early spring or summer. Plant as soon as possible after you've bought them. Pop into a shallow planting hole, probably fifteen to twenty centimetres, and. Um, and that's six to eight inches in depth if you're an old school person. Um, if you're planting them in clumps, then do space the crowns 30 to 90 centimetres, that's one to three feet, apart. Gosh, quite a long way apart then. Yes. because For their a, bigness. Yes, for the bigness. Hmm. But um, remember to mark the position of the plant with a stick or a cane to avoid accidental damage when dormant. So if you're sort of having a bit of a... Yes, a moving and or doing. Dig, yeah. Digging and a doing. Um, then you can replace the stick with a good strong cane Oh, uh, when they're growing. Required. Yeah. <sighs> <coughs> they are... <laughs> Do you want to take a sip of water there, Lucy? Um, they are hardy, mm. but Eremurus can be damaged by waterlogged soil. So, you know, if you think about where they grow... Yes. Um, so, autumn, a bit of dry mulch, mm -hmm. uh, bark, gravel, that could be helpful. Yeah. But um, don't cover the centre of the crown. Okay. So, the Eremurus... The Eremurus, they come into growth early in the season and the shoots are prone to frost again, so you've got to yes. be careful. Protect those new little growthlets with fleece or maybe a cloche. Oh, right. Um, well, that's marvellous, Paulie. Thank you. All mm. very interesting and very informational in equal measure. Another great plant to try at home, I suppose. Yes. Absolutely. I'm quite tempted to get some in my garden. Yes, good idea. But um, we can't dither. It's on to the Florography Fun Facts. Yes. And uh, this is the part of our podcast where we look into messages, customs, legends, and all quirky facts related to flowers and, well, anything floral, really, Lucy. Hmm. So, this week, we are, un un we are uncovering interesting little nuggets on a symbol of fertility and a forager's delight. Hmm. The crab apple. Yes. Now, these wonderful and autumnal bountiful trees are associated with love and marriage and its small hard fruit make an exquisite jewel-coloured jelly. How lovely. Yes, yes, mm. I, I do love these fun facts, actually. Mm. I love the idea of being able to harvest the fruits from something like this, from the trees around us, and make wonderful things to sort of put in a jar and have in your larder. And yes, wonderful, love yes, all that. it's good for the soul. Good for the soul, mm. exactly. Yes, so this apple tree, the crab apple tree, is one of the ancestors of the common cultivated apple tree, um, of which there are more six, more than 6,000 varieties. And the crab apple can live up to 100 years. Mature trees grow to around 10 metres in height, and they have irregular, round-shaped and wide canopies that spread. So that's rather lovely. You could lie under one of those on a summer's day, Ooh, couldn't you, and look up. Mm. They have an irregular, round-shaped... Oh, no, I've done that. Sorry. Uh, the bark is greyish brown and flecked and trees often become gnarled and twisted and their twigs can develop spines. This crabbed appearance may be what gave rise to its common name, crab apple. Oh, like the sort of tendrils of a crab. Or like the feet. Crabby, crabby well, the feet. The feet, you know, crab going... I see, I see what you did there. Yes, I was thinking more along the lines of an actual crab oh. scuttling across with their kind of little pointy feet. Like lots yes. of little dancing... 
Anyway, um, so the crabapple is one of the few trees, a host tree, to the parasite mistletoe, and that's Viscum album, and that is a particular mistletoe that loves the crabapple tree. And they're also, the crabapple trees, often covered in lichens or lichen. You say lichen. I say lichen. Yes. Let's call the whole thing off. Let's not do that quite yet. Yes. Um, but no, I love a bit of mistletoe. I just love a bit of mistletoe. It's just kind of... You know, I love going up a ladder and getting a little saw out and hacking it off, mm. popping it above your mm. fireplace. But obviously, we'll be doing lots of Christmas decorations yes. later on. But we won't talk Coming about up. that now. But um, but what I love about um, um, crab, crab apples, they're such a sort of super accompaniment to late summer blooms, mm. hydrangeas, yeah. and all those wonderful, big, sort of herbaceous, lovely late summer performers. Mm. And um, it just makes me think of the style of the great floral decorator um kenneth turner i need to say great late but he is very much with us um and he really was the original all that kind of hedgerow yes. just picked from the garden mm. style which i completely adore the outside inside absolutely love outside, that hedgerow sheep oh i love it i know and it's kind of seasonal yeah. and you know indigenous all those lovely words we love um but when i first worked in flowers i trained at royal florist moises stevens in mayfair mm. which was an amazing experience. Yes, um, I bet. Every day was different. There was always a lavish house to decorate or a, or a glitzy wedding at somewhere like Claridge's mm. or, you know, the Dorchester. How wonderful. I know, amazing. But, um, but I worked and learnt from some of the best florists in the world there, really. And um, it was so gorgeous. Uh, such lovely seasonal work. Mm. And crab apples were always one of those ingredients that shout autumn from the rafters. Yes. And... Um, I just used to love it when you'd see a great big urn of them being used and that warm red glow and how abundant and copious they look. Yes. Um, grouped along the bough. Yes. You know. It's very Harvest Festival, isn't it? Very much so, but mm. no tins of baked beans. No, though. no. Um, <laughs> and, and, well, that's how they're sold at the market in long boughs. Yes, and, yes. Um, and they're so perfect to make a big statement in a vase. Yes, um, gorgeous. Laden with those seasonal beauties. Yes, gosh. But I remember one party. Um, yeah. I did the Dorchester when I worked at Moises and I was still training. So the seasoned florists were so talented, but they were also quite scary. So, you know, they'd be up a ladder and they'd sort of put their arm Did down. they send you and say, you know, pass me this, yes, pass me well, that. They'd put their hand down to sort of be And expect it. you to know. And if, yes. And if they, you handed the wrong thing, they might throw it back <gasps> at you. I mean, those, that, that wouldn't happen now. That would no, be no. bullying or something, wouldn't it? But they were quite kind of... What yes. Um, demanding that's the word Florida exacting demand. exacting mm. yes yes but um so we did um we did these huge teetering urns um and just watching them with great ease and aplomb putting yes. these lovely herbaceous things together magical um but to cut a long story short yes these five meter high decorations had endless boughs of five meters yeah, vast wow i mean terrifying yeah um <laughs> And they had boughs and boughs of crab apples at this huge wedding. Um, and the party goers um, got quite out of control later on at the party. And uh, they managed to knock over one of these vast decorations. Oh, and no. A lot of water, smashed floral foam. And do you find that, then, were you sort of alerted immediately? Or is that just something no, you're really, told you is, when you, you know, turn up the next day? This is dancing. They're all dancing oh, at two in the gosh. morning. And it's, one was knocked over. And, of course, crab apples went everywhere. And got trodden into the very cream carpet at the Dorchester. And I think uh, quite a large great. bill for the client there, Lou. Dearie um, me. I just don't know what it would cost to recarpet the ballroom at the Dorchester. I <laughs> shudder to think, and it just makes me feel a bit nervous thinking about it, actually. But, you know, the humble crab apple, it's always charming. Um, they don't have to be in a vase. No. You could sprinkle them along your table with some yeah. branches of rosemary mm. um, for a quick and easy tablescape for a lovely cheery sunday lunch yes that's a great idea mm. that's a really good idea yes um i found out that the trees actually have oval shaped leaves and mm -hmm. the fruit forms in little clusters a little bit like a cherry so when you see a little sort of a whole load of, of blooms on a cherry tree they all come off these little stalks that is how the crab apples are formed and they do form as individual fruits on the end of those stalks so some crab apples are red and some are yellowish orange and this is coming up now is a basic recipe for crab apple jelly. Yum, yum, yum. Mm. Four kilograms of crab apples and one kilogram of caster sugar. It's as simple as that. You wash the apples, remove any blossom heads, cut out any bruised bits, shove them in a preserving pan, fill with water just enough to cover the apples, bring to the boil, simmer for 25 minutes. Then you pour it into a jelly bag if you're lucky enough to have one of those. If not, 
into several layers of muslin. Leave to drip overnight into a clean pan. Don't be tempted to squeeze it in any way, otherwise your jelly will go cloudy. And then the next day, you measure out that lovely juice and you combine with the sugar at a ratio of 10 parts juice to 7 parts sugar. So 100 grams of juice will require 70 grams of sugar. Then you bring to the boil, just like a normal jam, dissolve the sugar, keep it at a rolling boil for 35 to 40 minutes. So that's quite a long rolling boil for those rolling jam boil. makers. Mm, I love a rolling boil. <laughs> um, and then you skim off the froth quite regularly. And then you just test that it sets by putting some onto a saucer, making sure it wrinkles, and pop it in a little jar, a recycled jar. Mm, I just, I'm just seeing your lovely pots of... Well, you actually gave me some of your lovely blackberry jelly. It's yes. Beautiful. But yes. I can see some gingham, mm. bit of string. Tied around the top. Bit, lovely yeah. Christmas presents. I think that's... A, do you know what, Lou? I'm going to put you on the spot here. I think... Yeah. It sounded so lovely. I think you should put that little recipe up on our Instagram page. Oh, okay. Go on then. The, you know, Why like, not? What do you think? Absolutely. Sounds I'll do that. So idea. if anyone is interested, that will be up... As this comes out, there will be a little crab apple jelly recipe for you to go and create at home. Perfect time of year. Lovely idea. I'm uh, feeling very autumnal now. Yes. An autumnal walk and some crab apple mm. jelly over the weekend, maybe. Now... I have to embrace my Russell Grant name now. Yes. Um, and investigate the next autumn star sign and flower associated with this month. Yes. Um, as we're currently entering the star sign of Libra. So all you that were born from the 24th of September to the 23rd of October. The characteristic traits of this zodiac sign um, mean that your flowers are something that is rather lovely, actually. And I am rather jealous of this. So choosing the flowers for your astrological sign can be enjoyable because you can use the flowers to select a gift for somebody or to give a plant to somebody or using the influence the flower has to create something like a gift. Um, and I'd actually love that. If somebody gave me my birth flower, I would really enjoy that. What do you think, Paulie? I think that's lovely. And it's a little bit thoughtful. Yes. And it's not... You know, you can spend tons of money on a, uh, yes. on, on a on a present, but actually, to actually sort of make it that specific, go and pick the right um, flower, and I yes, think it's really good fun. And you Librans, you're very lucky. Yeah, um, you've got roses as your zodiac flower. And Lovely. Oh God, aren't they lucky? Yeah. Do you know any Librans? Yes, I've got lovely Cloda, who is my neighbour. She's from Ireland, oh. and she's a lovely Libra, and her birthday's coming up quite soon. Um, so I'll be looking forward to her. She's Irish, so um, we'll be doing a little Irish drink, maybe a little bit of Irish dancing, lovely. and um, I could take some roses for that. That's a lovely idea, mm. and also the hydrangea. Oh, lovely. And um, you know, they have they tend to be... Actually, my father was a Libra, and I think. God, mm. that's a terrible thing. I should know that, shouldn't I? Mm, your November, mother will be cross. November, November... Uh, oh, yes, October, was he born? Oh, October. Yes, he was a Libran. He was. Mm. So um, they tend to be uh, composed and balanced. So, um, yes. Hence the classic rose is their kind of stable flower. Yes. A red rose also reflects love and beauty, making it a great gift for a Libran friend mm. or um, just a wonderful arrangement yes. for you to have in your home if your birthday is during that time of the Libranness. Yes, absolutely. Can I say Libranness? Yes, just absolutely. So go and treat yourself, Librans, and bring some roses in. Come yes, on. that's a good idea. Great idea. So, um, roses for Libra, love that. And of course, there are some fantastic videos of you showing how to condition, use, and arrange ro roses, actually, Paulie, aren't there, on our Fabulous Flowers TV YouTube channel. So that'll be inspiration for everybody if you just want to head over to Fabulous Flowers TV on YouTube. Absolutely. There are lots of other little film mats there, but it's great to know how to how to get the mm. best from your roses. Um, and th all those little tips certainly help. Yes, they really do. I think we're getting a lot of feedback from all of you out there that are really finding that Paulie's tips are helping your flowers last longer, look nicer and smell more fragrant in the room. Um, so please do also keep your amazing photos of your flowers coming into us so we can see them, we can share them, we can put them on our Instagram, on our Facebook. Just tag us, all one word, at Fabulous Flowers TV, and they will find their way to us. Absolutely. I mean, just pop something in a milk bottle, yeah. any old vessel, yeah. and it just says seasonal charm, and we love to see how creative you're all being, oh. you flowery followers, followers out there. We do. We really, really do. That's an absolutely fabulous thing, Paulie. I completely concur. That's a very grown-up word. Yes, I know. Well, you know, it wasn't that long that I was at school, so it's still quite fresh. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, so I think that's about it, Paulie, isn't it? Here oh. we are in my kitchen, the end yes, of another podcast. I just didn't want it to end, but mm. it's, I've got to drive back to West Sussex and say goodbye to you, and it's um, 
just a lovely flowery sunny afternoon it's been it gorgeous. is a flowery sunny afternoon but um it's a it's a lovely flowery sunny goodbye from me now goodbye and a sunny goodbye from me bye everyone hey that was rather lovely oh my god that was lovely i love the way we're not so scared of making mistakes and i think that makes it flow i completely personally agree speaking.